ever wondered how the sugar in your morning coffee or favorite cookies actually gets made? We stir it into our coffee, bake it into desserts, and sprinkle it on fruit. But most of us never stop to think about how this everyday ingredient is made. Welcome to Green AgroWorks, where today we're following the incredible journey of sugar from towering sugarcane fields to massive industrial refineries. This isn't just a story of farming. It's a high-tech process involving tons of raw sugar, chemical purification, powerful machines, and expert precision. We'll take you behind the scenes of one of the world's most advanced sugar processing lines, where truckloads of cane are transformed into the pure, crystal-white sweetness we all know. You'll see how science meets agriculture and how something so ordinary is actually the result of extraordinary effort. So if you've ever been curious about the real story behind your sugar, grab a seat, hit that like button, and let's dive into a fascinating world of flavor, factory, and feel. The journey of refined sugar doesn't start in a polished kitchen. It begins in massive sugar cane fields stretching for miles. Once the cane is harvested, it's crushed to extract a thick golden brown juice that's boiled down and crystallized into raw sugar. This raw sugar, gritty, dark, and still carrying remnants of cane fibers and molasses, is transported in bulk by 18 wheelers, each carrying up to 100 to 10,000 pounds. At the refinery, these truckloads arrive throughout the day and are unloaded into an automated receiving hopper. This massive steel container is connected to a system of conveyor belts that moves the sugar to a 1,000-ton holding bin, which acts like a staging area before refining begins. The pace is relentless, with up to 60 tons of raw sugar processed every hour. And while it may look rough now, this is the start of its transformation into the shiny white crystals we're all familiar with. But before it gets there, the sugar must go through an intense series of refining stages to remove impurities, molasses, and natural coloration. This includes melting, clarification, filtering, decolorization, and eventually, recrystallization. Before we head into the next phase of sugar refining, where things get even more high-tech, we'd love to hear from you. Did you know sugar goes through this much processing before it hits your pantry? Let us know in the comments. And if you're enjoying this behind-the-scenes journey from field to factory, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to Green. AgroWorks for more real stories from the world of agriculture and food science. Now let's move on to the next critical step, turning clarified sugar into the pure, crystal-clear sweetness we all recognize. Once the raw sugar is unloaded and held in storage, the real transformation begins. The first major step in the refining process is melting, where the raw crystals are combined with hot, concentrated syrup, known in the industry as a raw wash. This mixture, called magma, is thick, sticky, and golden brown, and it's carefully monitored for density to ensure uniformity. The magma then enters the centrifuge, spinning at over 1,000 revolutions per minute. As it spins, hot water is sprayed into the chamber, separating molasses and other natural impurities from the sugar crystals. Think of it as a giant washing machine for sugar. The result? Cleaner, finer crystals, and a first big step toward whiteness. But we're still far from finished. Those crystals are then melted into what's called melter liquor, a thick liquid containing about 65% sugar. To make it food grade and crystal clear, we enter the next stage, clarification. In this step, lime and food grade phosphoric acid are added to the melter liquor. Sounds intense, but this process is highly controlled and completely safe. Then tiny air bubbles are introduced, acting like a natural scrubbing agent. A binding agent called a flocculant helps pull all the dirt, debris, and leftover particles to the surface. That surface layer, known as scum, is skimmed off and discarded. What's left is a much purer, clearer liquid, clarified liquor. Before moving on, this clarified liquor passes through a series of sand and gravel filters, catching even the tiniest bits of residue. It's now clean enough to drink, but still golden in color due to the natural tints from the sugarcane. To tackle that, we turn to the next powerhouse of the process, activated carbon filtration, 
where the color is stripped out and the final transformation begins. But before we dive into that high-tech step, let us know in the comments, have you ever seen raw sugar before it's refined? Was it what you expected? And if you're enjoying this peek into real food production, hit that like button and subscribe to Green AgroWorks for more. Now that we have a clean, clarified sugar liquor, it's time to take on the next challenge, color. Although the liquid is free of debris and impurities, it still holds a golden hue, natural pigments carried over from the cane. To turn this amber syrup into the pure white sugar most of us recognize, we bring in the powerhouse of refinement, activated carbon filtration. This step works much like a high-end water filter. The clarified liquor is passed through tall carbon columns filled with specially treated charcoal. These columns absorb the remaining organic matter and trace minerals that give the sugar its color. The result? A liquid known as fine liquor, now crystal clear and ready for crystallization. But before sugar can take shape, we need to increase the concentration. The fine liquor only contains about 65% sugar, so it's routed into a triple effect evaporator, an industrial system that uses heat and vacuum pressure to remove excess water. This system is designed for efficiency, conserving energy, while slowly bringing the sugar content up to 78%. Inside the evaporator, the liquid gently boils under reduced pressure, meaning it can evaporate at lower temperatures, which protects the flavor and integrity of the sugar. By the time it exits this system, it's transformed into a thick, sweet syrup, the perfect base for crystallization. This is the bridge between the raw plant and the sparkling sweetener you spoon into your coffee. From muddy molasses to sparkling syrup, the sugar is beginning to reveal its final form. We're getting closer to the most magical part, the actual birth of sugar crystals. But before we dive into that transformation, here's a quick question. Do you prefer white granulated sugar or raw golden cane sugar in your kitchen? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your sweet preference. With the syrup thickened to just the right concentration, it's finally time for the moment we've been building toward, the formation of sugar crystals. The fine liquor now enters vacuum pans, enormous vessels that boil the syrup under reduced pressure. Why vacuum? Because it lowers the boiling point, allowing sugar crystals to form without overheating or caramelizing the syrup. Inside these pans, a small amount of caster sugar, ultra-fine crystals, is added as a seed to encourage uniform growth. As the syrup boils, these seeds act as a nucleus, and slowly, tiny crystals begin to grow. This crystallized syrup, now called masacuate, has the consistency of wet sand and is ready for separation. Next, it moves into a high-speed centrifuge, spinning at over 1,000 revolutions per minute. This powerful spinning action separates the sugar crystals from the remaining syrup, known as molasses, a fine mist of hot water is sprayed in to wash off impurities and adjust the final color of the crystals. The result? Clean, sparkling sugar crystals. White, uniform, and nearly ready for your pantry. But they're not quite done yet. The crystals still carry a bit of moisture, so they head to the rotary dryer, a massive machine where warm air flows over the sugar, gently removing excess water. This stage is crucial for preventing clumping and ensuring long shelf life. Once dried, the sugar is sent to a 3,000-ton conditioning silo, where it's slowly cooled and dehumidified for 24 to 36 hours. This final resting period stabilizes the sugar, locks in its quality, and gets it ready for packaging. It's hard to believe that these tiny white grains started as towering stalks of sugar cane, isn't it? Watching sugar crystals bloom from thick syrup is a mesmerizing experience, isn't it? Have you ever tried making your own rock candy or sugar crystals at home? If so, please leave a comment with one. If not, please leave a comment with zero. Coming up next, let's take a look at what happens after the drying process, the journey into packaging, and how different sugar products are made from one crystal base. After spending up to 36 hours in the massive conditioning silo, the sugar is now stable, dry, and ready for its final form, packaging and distribution. But before it hits store shelves, that one uniform sugar crystal becomes the base for a surprisingly wide range of sugar products. Let's begin with bulk packaging, 
Much of the refined sugar is packed into 2,000 pound super sacks for food manufacturers, bakeries, and beverage companies. These bulk orders are shipped across the country to power everything from soda bottling plants to donut factories. But the sugar also heads into more familiar formats for everyday consumers. It's portioned into one and five pound paper bags, branded and sealed using high-speed automated lines. The bags are stacked, boxed, and palletized with precision, all ready for your local supermarket. What's really fascinating is how the same base sugar crystal is customized into different textures and uses. For example, caster sugar. This super fine version dissolves quickly and is used in delicate baked goods like meringues or whipped creams. Powdered sugar. The crystals are ground into a silky powder and often mixed with a bit of cornstarch to prevent caking, a favorite for icing, frostings, and dusting. Turbinado or raw sugar. Some of the syrup left from centrifuging is reintroduced to lightly coat crystals, giving them a golden hue and molasses flavor. Brown sugar, made by blending refined white sugar with molasses. It comes in light or dark varieties and delivers that warm, rich taste perfect for cookies or BBQ rubs. Even sugar cubes, which are pressed from moist sugar crystals and dried into perfect shapes, are made right here in the same facility. From industrial-scale sweeteners to tabletop shakers, each product follows strict quality control. Labs within the factory monitor moisture content, crystal size, and color, ensuring that every grain of sugar meets exacting standards. With all forms packaged, labeled, and boxed, the final leg of the journey begins. Shipment to grocery stores, bakeries, and homes across America. Behind every grain of sugar lies a story not just of taste and tradition, but of economic power and environmental responsibility. Sugarcane farming and processing fuel a billion-dollar industry that supports thousands of jobs in entire regional economies, especially in areas like Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. In the U.S., sugarcane fields stretch across more than 900,000 acres, generating millions of tons of raw sugar each year. The ripple effect of this crop touches everyone from field laborers and truck drivers to engineers, chemists, and factory technicians. It's not just a crop, it's an economic engine. But with great output comes great responsibility. That's why many modern sugar mills are investing heavily in sustainability efforts. For example, leftover sugarcane stalks, known as bagasse, aren't thrown away. They're burned in high-efficiency boilers to generate steam and electricity. In many cases, this bioenergy powers the entire mill, reducing reliance on fossil fuels and cutting emissions significantly. Water use is another critical concern. Many facilities now recycle process water through closed loop systems, using advanced filtration and condensation techniques to conserve millions of gallons each year. Wastewater is treated before discharge, ensuring it meets environmental safety standards. Refineries are also reducing their carbon footprint by switching to more efficient equipment, LED lighting, and smart automation systems that minimize waste during every stage of production. Meanwhile, agricultural researchers are working on sugarcane varieties that require less water, are more resistant to pests, and yield higher sugar content per acre. All steps toward a more resilient and climate-friendly future. So, the next time you stir a spoonful of sugar into your coffee, remember, it's not just sweetness in a cup. It's the result of innovation, labor, science, and sustainability all working together to bring a little bit of joy to your table. From the fields to the factory, the journey of sugar is more than just a story of production. It's a symbol of innovation, dedication, and progress. What started as tall stalks swaying under the sun becomes one of the most common ingredients in kitchens across the country. We've witnessed how advanced technology and hardworking hands come together to refine raw sugar into the sweet, white crystals we use every day. Behind that spoonful lies a chain of sustainable practices, clean energy solutions, and constant innovation that keeps this industry moving forward. So, the next time you bake cookies, sweeten your tea, or enjoy a favorite dessert, you'll know the journey sugar took to get to your table and the incredible process behind every bite. If you enjoyed this deep dive into modern agriculture, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Green, AgroWorks and share your thoughts below.